everybody welcome back to this channel if you're new welcome so this is a channel for all leaving search students who are doing the chemistry course and this is a playlist that i'm making for titrations and particularly calculations only so it was the calculations that i struggled with that's why i'm making these videos so as usual um before i start i'm just going to give you a few instructions or a little bit of the advice is, I suppose. Um, watch my videos on the introduction of titrations. That would give you an idea of the little little tips and tricks or the certain words that I'm using, which would be easier for you to understand. And if you have no clue what titrations are, especially if you're in fifth year, uh, that would be a great help. So as I was saying, this is also part of a playlist. So I have divided up every single titration in the course into these different categories. And you would know that from the first video. So this is the last one of the acid-base titrations. And this one is actually a weak acid and strong base titration. I'll tell you that later. Now, um, I would ask you to stop the video and do this question by yourself. And then you can do it with me when, I'm, when you're watching the rest of the video uh, to see which one got, did you get right, which one did you get wrong, why did you do that, and all those things. All right, so let's get started. So this particular experiment is usually more difficult for people in terms of calculation because it involves dilution factors and especially this particular thing called weight per volume. That confused me for a good while and personally, this was the hardest for me out of the acid-base titrations that I did. So if you know this, this particular question is a lot more difficult than the usual ones. It has a lot more tricks. Uh, so if you get that, I understand this, I would say you would be flying with the rest of them. So it's currently August 2nd, so the leaving cert results will be out on the 25th of August. So it's just even more important that, remember, next year, six years, this day will come for you. Uh, this time will come, will come for you next year. So it's just really, really important that you prepare well in advance. All right, so I would ask you to highlight the particular things that you would look at and think that it's important. And then I'll do that too. And then let's see and compare and contrast and see if we did the same thing. All right, I'll let you do that now. Okay, so I've highlighted some of the things. Before I talk about that, I'm just going to mention this whole weak acid strong base thing. So why did I mention this? Because I've seen these graphs that you have to learn off. Um, so this is to show your mechanism of action. How does your pH indicator work? So if you know this experiment, uh, the indicator that you use for this one is phenolphthalein. So phenolphthalein will work from a pH of 7 to 10. So it's just a side note that I'm giving you. I'm not going to do the theory now. But if you would like me to cover all of these graphs, like strong acid, strong base, weak acid, strong base, um, what is it, um, strong acid, weak base, just let me know and I will do that. Comment down below, like this video. It's just how you push these things out and how I would know there's demand for certain videos. So don't don't hesitate to comment down below. All right, getting back to the question. I have highlighted certain things here. All the yellow ones are basically telling you what this whole experiment is about, and the purple ones are the numerical data. All right, so what I would think is important is the whole idea. So there you go. To determine the concentration of ethanoic acid in a sample of vinegar. Previously standardized solution of NaOH. Now, you would know if you watched my videos before, pre what does previously standardized mean? And then diluted vinegar, that's important. It's not just normal vinegar, it's diluted. And then the whole idea is to neutralize the solution. Uh, let's start with the question here. Okay, so this is calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in each 25 cubic centimeter portion bit tricky i'll let you do that read this question and then let's see that okay so the number of moles the first formula that i would think of when i hear that is n equals cv divided by a thousand but look at this c and it's divided by by a thousand so concentration by a thousand is also equal to m right so the molarity but i don't see any big m in the question which means it's not shown here but if you read it carefully and you know some of the tricks before uh, you would know that i can find the big m here so 
It says 1.20 grams of sodium hydroxide was mixed into 500. See, it's 500, not 250. Usually, most of the experiments, it would say 250. So don't just go off your head and your practice. Read the question carefully. Okay, so if I go back to this triangle, after Jesus, this is the only thing that has saved me in chemistry. So I know the mass. I know the MR of NaOH. MR, MR means uh, molecular mass. So Na is 23 plus 16 oxygen and 1 hydrogen is equal to 40. And this would give me the number of moles, which is also equal to M. Because this triangle will give me everything per 100 cubic centimeters or a liter. So I'm going to cover my N because that's what I want to find. So that would give me the formula mass divided by MR. So I'm going to do that really quick. So when I do that, I would get 0 0.03 per 500. Remember, that 1.20 was mixed into 500, not a liter. So to change that into a liter... It's 0 0.03 multiplied by 2, because 500 multiplied by 2 is equal to a liter. And that would give me 0 0.06 m. All right, so the volume is 25 cubic centimeters. You would know that based on the good number, bad number technique. So I will write that, 25 divided by 1,000, and that would give me 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles of NaOH. Next question. Number of moles of ethanoic acid per cubic centimeters. Trick per cubic centimeters. One cubic centimeter of diluted vinegar. So if I go back here, I would know 18.75 of diluted vinegar was used. And when I look at the reaction of equation, it's just one is to one. So that's no problem. Since it's 1 is to 1, we know it's the same amount of moles as the NaOH. Alright, so let's do that calculation. I divide that, that would give me 8 times 10 to the power of minus 5 moles per cubic centimeter. Next question. Question D. Find the concentration of ethanoic acid in the original vinegar. Original. This is extremely important. And this is where I'm going to tell you about the dilution factor. So if we look up to the question. It says 25 cubic centimeter of the vinegar was diluted into 250 cubic centimeters. So if I write that down, 25 is to 250. Simplify it, and that is equal to 1 is to 10 dilution factor. In normal English, this just means for every one part of normal vinegar, 10 parts of water was added, and that's how you get this diluted vinegar. So when you see these words concentration and moles per liter together, it basically means M, molarity, of the original vinegar. So I'm going to do that now. Whenever the question asks you to find the molarity, you do this equation. So that is V1 M1 over N1 equals V2 M2 over N2. I have labeled this into CH3 and Na for CH3OOH and NaOH. Now I'm just going to fill in the numbers. Volume of vinegar is 18.75. Molarity, we don't, want, we don't know. We're going to find. So that's x divided by n equals 1. Where do I get this n from? If you go back to this equation, it's the, it's the ratio. 1 is, to, 1 is to 1. Sorry. All right, going back. Volume of sodium hydroxide would be 25. And the molarity we, we found before is 0 0.06 because it's per liter divided by 1. Now, since those are two fractions and it's equal to each other, we're allowed to cross multiply. So you're going to do that. Doing this, don't miss any steps. No matter how experienced you are, exam pressure can make it have any mistakes. You can, it can cause some mistakes. All right, so the answer would be 0 0.08 moles per liter. But trick is that that is for the diluted ones. All the information that we got from the question is for diluted. So you have to take care of that dilution factor and multiply this by 10. In decimal place across ones, that answer would be 0 0.8 moles per liter. Or you can write that as 0 0.8 m. Our last question, we're still talking about the original vinegar as a percentage of W-V. 
Now, this thing, how do you read this? You call this as weight per volume. Weight per volume, I would say for me, it was just a lack of understanding of what that thing was. So weight in chemistry English is grams and volume is always cubic centimeters. Except when you're finding weight per volume, this cubic centimeters is always per 100. So your answer should be grams cm cubed. That should be the units that you're using. And you calculate it per 100. All right, I'll tell you how to do that now. Grams in normal English is also the same as mass. So going back to the trusty triangle, I'll just have to cover mass here. And you'll get the formula that is equal to moles multiplied by mr. So moles should be equal to 100 cubic centimeters. And the only moles that I know per original vinegar is actually 0 0.8. So to get this 1000 into 100, I need to divide it by 10. So what I do to one side, I need to do to the other. So 0 0.8 divided by 10 is equal to. And that gives me 0 0.08. So that's moles done. Now I need to find the molecular mass of ethanoic acid. And molecular formula for that is CH3COOH. Write down all the, the mass, um, no matter how much you know it. And that is equal to 60. Now I just need to multiply per the equation. Ethanoic acid is part of carboxylic acids. That's part of organic chemistry. So if you'd like me to do any videos on organic chemistry, calculations, or theory, do let me know by commenting down below. All right, so this would be 4.8 grams. Now, the question is per percentage. So to change that, any fraction multiplied by 100 is equal to percentage. Now, this is already in that form, 4.8 grams per 100. You can write this 4.8 grams as, let's say, 48 divided by 10. So that's what I mean by fraction. So it's very straightforward. The answer is going to be 4, sorry, 4, oh uh, no, God, my computer's lagging a little bit. Finally, 4.8 percentage weight per volume. That is your answer. So you know the trick behind weight per volume now. And that's it. So all credits goes to the State Examinations Commission for this question. And I would say personally, this is as hard as it would get unless random stuff like the graphs would come up. Honestly, after my exam in 2023, expect the unexpected. All right, so as a bonus, I can do this one. You would know how to do this question E from my first video. Starting with the primary standard solution made from anhydrous sodium carbonate, what two titrations are required to standardize a sodium hydroxide? So the answer would be anhydrous sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid, and then using that hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide would give you the concentration of NaOH, which is the same as standardizing it. All right, so hope this video helped you. If you have any recommendations, let me know. And any changes that you would like, let me know. So this concludes the whole acid and base titrations. God bless you. You can do it. You wouldn't be watching these videos if you don't want to improve. So hope this helps. I'll see you with the video next time. And the next part would be redox titrations. All right, see you. God bless. Bye.